This program is brought to you through Full Gospel Evangelism, a ministry that was founded and led by Pastor David McKivitt. We believe Jesus is still healing, saving, and working miracles today. To contact us, write to us at Full Gospel Evangelism, 81 Valentin Road, E17 3JJ. You can also telephone us or send us a text on plus 447778690931 or plus 4402085205149. Join our Facebook group, Pastor McKivitt's Ministries. Follow Pastor McKivitt on YouTube. Support us with an online donation. Our details are Full Gospel Evangelism, account number 9906213. Sort code 602223. Thank you. God bless you. Greetings and blessings. My name is Pastor David McKivitt, and this is the Victory in Truth television broadcast. Brought to you for a ministry called Full Gospel Evangelism. In this ministry, we believe that the Bible is the inspired, inerrant, infallible Word of God. And everything we teach and preach, we're back up by scripture. We believe that all the gifts of the Spirit, including speaking in tongues, prophesying, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom and discerning the spirits, all the gifts of the Spirit are still in the true church today and will remain in the true church until Jesus returns. We also believe that there is a fivefold ministry still in the church today. We still have apostles, we still have prophets, we still have evangelists. We have a fivefold ministry, and that fivefold ministry will remain in the church until Jesus returns. Until that time, none have ceased and none will cease. You will see some telephone numbers on your screen. Because in this ministry, we believe that Jesus is still healing, delivering, saving, and working miracles today. And if you have a prayer request, we would like to pray for you. And I recommend that you get a pen and paper and write down those numbers. Even if you don't need prayer now, you never know when you will. You may need counselling, someone to talk to will always be there for you. So write down those telephone numbers. That number that you see there, my mobile number, 07778690931. That number can be reached on WhatsApp, Telegram, Signal. You can call us anywhere in the world free of charge. The other number you see on the other side is my office number. You can only reach me there from 9 to about 3 or 4 o'clock. But the other number, you can reach me any time. And if it's busy and it goes through to voicemail, just leave a message. We will call you back because you are important to us. Now we're going to go into the Word of God now. And I'm going to read to you a verse of scripture that is found in Matthew 11, 25 to 26. Now I always say the scripture twice. So that you get a chance to write it down. And I recommend that you do that. Not only with me, but with any other preacher in television, or, or the radio, or in your local church. Write down the scriptures. When you get home, look it up in the Bible. Don't just read those scriptures. Read the whole chapter. Read the book. And make sure that what I'm saying, or any other preacher is saying is in line with the Word of God. So, Mark 11, 25 to 26. Mark 11, 25 to 26. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, Neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Notice it says if we don't forgive, we won't receive forgiveness. Now, this is not talking about salvation. We don't have to forgive everybody in order to be saved and forgiven of our sins. We just come as we are. 
The Bible says, by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works as any man should boast. You come as you are. You put your trust in the fact that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. You don't put your trust in what you can do. You put your trust in what he did. You believe that he died for your sins. He paid the price for your sins. You don't have to earn your salvation. You receive it as a gift free of charge. But when you do receive your salvation, you are expected to do good works. You don't do good works to be saved. You do good works because you are saved. The evidence of salvation is the good works. The way that you live, the way that you talk is evidence of your salvation. But not the means by which you receive it. But once you are saved and your sins are forgiven, you are expected to show forgiveness to others. Because if you do any sin after you are saved, and I'm not saying you should sin, we should avoid sin, but the Bible says if we say we have no sin, we are a liar, but if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we sin, not when we sin, we can receive forgiveness. But we cannot receive forgiveness if we refuse to forgive others that have done us wrong. So the title of the message is Forgive and Forget. Forgive and Forget. Now one of the things I've learned, and I've been preaching nearly 48 years, it will be 48 years this year. One of the things I've learned over the years, it's easier to preach something than it is to live it. It's easy to preach forgiveness than it is to actually do it. Because it's not an easy thing to do when you've been in the ministry and people ridicule you, laugh at you, and people that you've helped have walked out on you and told a lot of lies about you and slandered about you. You don't mind when it's someone you don't know, but when it's someone you work with, family members, etc., and they get turned against you, it can be hard to forgive. When you get people come in the church and they get upset with you for no reason and then they, then they try to turn everybody against you and try to split the church, it's not easy to forgive them. But who said the Christian life would be easy? Going God's way is never easy. So forgiveness is not an easy thing to do. And as I said, it's, it's easier to say it and preach it. But I've had to live it, but it's not easy to live it. I've done it. By God's grace, I've done it. In his strength, I have forgiven. But it's not easy. And I want you to understand that. Now, first of all, when we talk about forgive and forget, I had people come to me and say, Be Pastor McKibbit, I forgive, but I find it hard to forget. Well, first of all, nowhere in the Bible does it say forgive and forget. Nowhere. It tells us to forgive. It doesn't tell us to forget. Now, the Bible does talk in some ways about God forgetting our past. We read an example of Jeremiah 31, verse 34. Jeremiah 31 verse 34 And they shall teach no more every man his neighbour and every man his brother saying know the Lord for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them saith the Lord I will forgive their iniquity I will remember their sins no more not yet I will remember their sins no more but we have to understand what God is saying when he says that. Because we all believe that God is an all-knowing God. He knows everything. Now, if God doesn't remember something, how can he be all-knowing? God knows all things that have happened. He knows all things that will happen. Nothing is hidden. He is the all-knowing God. And sh should God ever forget anything, he would cease to be the all-knowing God. So what does it mean when he says, I will remember their sins no more? Well, it needs to be explained. And I will be, I will be explaining it.
Because I had people come to me and say, Pastor McKinney, I've forgiven, but I'm struggling to forget. Well, you're struggling to do something that the Bible doesn't tell you to do. The Bible tells you to forgive. It doesn't say you're going to forget it. But then there is a way in which we can forget that I'm going to explain. First of all, I don't teach people to forgive and forget. In many cases, you have to forgive and learn. Learn from your mistakes, because if you forget something, you're liable to do it again. I want you to remember something and learn from it. We have to forgive and learn. There are some times when we can forgive and be reconciled, but not in every case we can be reconciled. And neither would it be wise to be reconciled in every case. Suppose um, somebody, maybe your daughter or you, get raped by some man, or somebody, if you're a man, somebody um, hits you, cuts you, attacks you in the street, you may choose to forgive them. But if a woman is raped by a man, she may choose to forgive that man. It doesn't mean she's going to become good friends with that person. It doesn't mean she's going to invite him round her house. Sometimes you have to forgive and move on. You have to forgive and learn from them. If somebody steals some money from you, you may forgive them, but it doesn't mean you're going to give them your credit card. Sometimes you have to forgive and move on. There are other times where forgiveness can lead to reconciliation, such as maybe a man who's committed adultery and his wife forgives him, maybe they can be reconciled. And that's perfectly possible to be reconciled. When people offend you in any way, sometimes you can forgive and be reconciled. But in other cases, it would not be wise to be reconciled. If somebody, God forbid that it should happen, should sexually molest one of your children, you may forgive them. But I don't suggest that you invite them round to babysit. You, sometimes you have to forgive and move on. It's not every forgiveness that needs the reconciliation. But in many cases, we can forgive and be reconciled. So what do we mean when we say forget? Well, first of all, it doesn't say wipe our mind. It doesn't mean wipe our minds. You can't remove something that's happened from your mind. You can't forget in that sense. In fact, the more you try to forget something, the more you're going to remember it. So what do we mean when we say forget? I remember when I was growing up, I think people still say it in England, I don't hear it so much these days, but when I was a child I used to hear it quite a lot. If you owed somebody some money, they would say forget it. If you've done somebody any wrong and you apologise, they may say forget it. When they say forget it, they don't mean that you are literally to forget it. When they say forget it, that what they are saying is, I am not demanding it anymore. Oh yes, you owe me that money, but I say forget it. In other words, I'm not going to demand that money of you again. I'm not going to bring it up. I'm not going to pay it as a debt to you. It's forgotten. In other words, I have released you from it. That's what it means when God says, I will remember your sins no more, it doesn't mean that God is literally going to forget because then God would, then God would not be all-knowing. What it means is, God said, I will remember in, in a sense of revenge or judgment, it is forgo forgotten. No more judgment. When you come to Jesus Christ and you receive his salvation, he will never bring up your sins again. He will not hold it to your account again. You are forgiven. He will never mention it. And that's what it means when we say we forget something. It means not that we wipe our mind, but we release it, that person, from it. I often 
often hear people say, well, I've forgiven that person, but you know they haven't really forgiven them. You get a husband and a wife, they have an argument, and then he says, forgive me, or she says, forgive me. And you say, okay, you're forgiven. But the next argument, they bring it up again. And every argument, they bring it up again. They have not forgiven that person. I hear people come to me and say, my parents did this, my parents did that, I have forgiven them. This is what they did to me. I know they haven't forgiven them because they're still bringing it up. They still mention it. When you forgive someone, you forget it in the sense that you're never going to raise it again. If you have an argument and you've forgiven, you don't bring it up the next time. You don't keep throwing it in their face. You release them from it. It might also be worth saying that forgiveness is an act of the will, not the emotion. I have people say to me, Pastor McKibbin, I've forgiven that person, but I still feel it inside me. Well, first of all, forgiveness is an act of the will. You choose to forgive that person, no matter how you feel, no matter how you feel emotionally. You may be angry, you may be hurt, but you choose to forgive that person. It is an act of the will. You may not feel like it. I mean, if somebody rapes your daughter, you might forgive them, but it doesn't mean you're ever going to feel good about what's happened to them, or if you've been raped, or you've been molested, or anything's happened to you. It doesn't mean you're ever going to feel good about it, but you have forgiven them, because when you forgive, something happens. Something happens. It releases God to move in our life. You see, friends, Forgiveness, when I forgive somebody, that is for my benefit, not for the person that you are forgiven. You see, if I am angry, if somebody does me any wrong and I get angry with that person, they may not be there. I could be for the bitterness, anger and resentment. They're not with me. Who is being affected? I am. I am being affected by that bitterness, resentful. You may, you may have had a bad relationship, but if you hold on to that bitterness and resentment, you're going to bring it into every new relationship that comes along. There are people that have had a bad experience in a previous church. They've come to another church, but they've never got over it. They've never forgiven. They've held on to that bitterness, resentment, and they bring that bitterness and resentment into their new, into the new church. Forgiveness is for your benefit because when you hold on to unforgiveness, it can affect your health, it can affect your relationship, but when you choose to forgive, you allow the healing process to begin. Not that you're ever going to forget it, but you'll remember it without the bitterness, resentment and anger. You will remember it in that sense. You see, unforgiveness give Satan the upper hand over us. Let me read that in 2 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11. When you forgive, this is 2 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11. When you forgive people for what they have done, I forgive them too. For when I forgive, if indeed I need to forgive anything, I do it in Christ's presence because of you, in order to keep Satan from getting the upper hand over us, for we know what his plans. You see, friends, unforgiveness joins us to the devil. Jesus forgave. Jesus came to forgive. Jesus came to this earth to forgive. And when we forgive, we are joining with Jesus, who is the great forgiver, the great saviour. But when we hold on to unforgiveness, we are joining to the devil and we are opening ourselves up to, de to demons who will continue to trouble us and we'll be bound by bitterness, resentment and anger. Forgiveness helps the one who is forgiven. 
Now maybe you've gone to someone and they say, you say, sorry, I've done wrong and they won't forgive you. Well, then it's in their hands. You've done your part. You don't need to worry about that. You've done your part. But it's, it's them that are unforgiven. You, and if someone does you wrong and you forgive them, even if they don't forgive you, if you've forgiven them, that's okay. Just move on. You're responsible for what you do, not for what somebody else does. I want to give you some blessings of forgiveness. Blessings that come through forgiveness. As I previously said, by forgiving, you are joining yourself to Jesus. Jesus' whole ministry was about forgiveness. Jesus came to this earth to forgive. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He came to save. He forgave people, even when other people didn't forgive them. They brought a woman that was caught in the act of adultery, and Jesus forgave her. When the others wanted to stone her, Jesus forgave her. Jesus forgave on the cross. When they nailed him to the cross, the nails went in his hands, the thorns on his head, the whipping that he received. And yet what did Jesus say? Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now, Jesus forgave in the midst of pain and agony. So that's why I said forgiveness is an act of the will, not the act of the emotion. In the midst of the pain, in the midst of the torture that Jesus went through, he cried out, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When we choose to forgive those that have done us harm, we are showing that we belong to the great forgiver. We are united with him. When we don't forgive, you cannot say, I belong to Jesus, the forgiver, if you refuse to forgive. You don't belong to Jesus. Because if you belong to Jesus, the character of Jesus will be seen in you. When you refuse to forgive, you open yourselves to demonic attacks. Let me go on. Number two, when you forgive, you will close the door for demons to enter into your life. When you hold on to unforgiveness, you're allowing the devil, because the devil is full of hate, bitterness and resentment. God is full of love. Jesus came because he loved us. But when you open, hold on to unforgiveness, you... The devil will come in through with bitterness, resentment and anger. But when the moment you choose to forgive, not that you're going to feel like it, <coughs> but when you choose to forgive, you are closing the door to the devil. Let me read again 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11. He's talking about forgiveness, but then he says, let Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. When you walk in forgiveness, you're, you're, you're telling the devil, I'm not going to allow you to have any part in my life. I am not giving any place for you. Number three, forgiveness gives us access to the throne of God. We, come be, we can come to God. We cannot come to God with an unforgiving nature because God is a forgiving God. And when you come with unforgiveness, you are opposing God. But when you forgive, you can come boldly before the throne of God. That is why Jesus said in Mark 11, verses 25, when you stand pray and forgive, if you ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. We must forgive. In fact, the psalmist asked two questions. I'm moving very quickly now because time is going. So, the psalmist asked two questions and then he gave an answer. Psalms 24, verses 3 and 4. Psalms 24, verses 3 and 4. Whom shall ascend into the hill? 
first question. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Second question. Or who may stand in his holy place? These are the questions he's asking. Who can ascend into the hill? Who can stand in his holy place? And then he gives the answer. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor so sworn deceitfully. When you come before God with unforgiveness, you've got dirty hands. You need to forgive. You may not feel like doing it, but do it anyway. I don't praise God when I feel like it. I praise God when I don't feel like it and when I feel like it. We must learn to forgive whether we feel like it or we don't feel like it because then we are showing our relationship to the true and living God. Oh, there's so much I could say on this subject, but time is running out. But if you need prayer or you need someone to talk to, phone those numbers. If this message has been a blessing to you, phone and let me know. Those numbers are on your screen right now. Make a note of those numbers. And as I said, that mobile number, you can reach us on directly by phoning it. You can reach us on Signal, Telegram or WhatsApp. We would love to hear from you. Well, we have come to the end of the broadcast. So God be with you until we meet again. Jesus, you said you free.